Hello everyone, welcome back to Art a la carte. I've been doing some shopping over the last couple weeks, getting some new art supplies and some fun arty kind of things. I thought it'd be fun to show you in this video some of the things that I purchased, where I purchased them, and kind of some information about that. First thing is first is you don't need an art store to get some fun supplies. In fact, this isn't an art supply here. This was this kind of fun little uh, planner thing that I got at my local Dollar Tree. But it's really nice as it has like the month and you can kind of um, list out some different things. It's meant mainly for expenses, um, but I thought I would put in like different... Um, different work related things and has like some pockets I could put receipts in there and stuff like that so it's not art related but I thought it was really pretty and it was a dollar so that's fun also while I was at the Dollar Tree I found this really cute roll of duct tape and it has these little flowers and hearts I guess there's no flowers on it there's stars stars and hearts and splotches of paint and I thought it'd be fun to make um, some covered pencil boxes and holders and I might show you how I do that later I did a similar one here using just, um, I think it's a soup can, and I covered it with Olaf duct tape. So you can kind of see how that works with that. So I thought I could make some more with this. That'd be fun. Also found the cutest washi tape. So this is the first one. It has this cute little rain cloud pattern. And I love putting these on envelopes and things. Um, and this one, oh, it's so cute. It's cute little owls. So that's how it looks there. So cute! And the last one I got was these kind of um, forest animals. So there's little owls and snails and squirrels and mushrooms and a deer and a little hedgehog thing. So I got those three. Also looking for some things to put my paperwork in, especially art that I'm kind of working on or sketches and stuff while I'm working out so I can keep my projects kind of organized. Otherwise it kind of just overcomes my entire desk and just goes everywhere. So I got these, they're little shallow bins. I don't know if you can, it's kind of hard to see them, but they would definitely easily fit um, a 9 by 6 or uh, 9 by 12 piece of paper and sketches in there. So when I'm working on a project, all of my reference photos in here and the sketch in there and all that. And I have two of them so I can keep those stored. So hopefully I'll keep things a little more organized in my studio. And then I got these. They're similar, but they stack on top of each other. And it was either this green or super hot pink. And normally I like hot pink more than green, but the hot pink was kind of an annoying hot pink. So I got this one instead. So they stack up like that. And I thought it'd be nice to kind of put, then I can put, uh, uh, I don't know, just fun stacking things. Again, trying to be organized in my studio just a little bit more than I already am. And I think this is the last thing I got from the dollar store. It was this little, mini little container. It's really cute. I've got big ones like this. Not this color, but. So it has these cute little drawers. And as you know, I have a very dirty gummy eraser so I had to buy some more eraser supplies and gummy erasers so I thought this would be great one to put my erasers in and one to put I don't know like pencil sharpers or maybe my washi tape in that would be kind of fun to have my washi tape in one of those I don't know just trying to keep my erasers a little bit clean so at least one of these will hold the new eraser bin <laughs> so the next place I went to I went to a Ruby Tuesdays um, which is kind of like, I don't know if you have Ross nearby, um, it's kind of like a Ross, um, but it has really fun deals. It has a whole huge variety. It's not so, I don't know if there's any clothes there, um, mostly household items, and they have a really good sewing and art section. So I found this, and this is Canson Bristol Board. So it's actually really thick, three pieces of super duper thick um, like cardboard that has Bristol, it's Bristol board, but it's kind of thick like cardboard. It was for 99 cents for three of them. So here, I got, so I got three packs of those. So let me show you. This is one that I opened here. So it's, so it says Canson on the back and it's really, really thick. So there's three of those and I thought that'd be really cool to put a painting on that's really nice thick and I don't know if it would do with watercolors, but I'm going to try it out. Maybe markers or a different color pencils would probably work on it. I don't know. I thought I thought for 99 cents, it was definitely worth a shot getting one of them. And I thought since I was going to get one, I would they only had three packs there. So I thought I would just go ahead and get all three packs. Because if it's really good, it's going to be great. And if it's not good, I can use it like I would use cardboard. And then another big find I found at Tuesday morning was this Canson um, watercolor paper. 
And it's the kind that is like a thick pad, but it's glued on all the sides except for like a little corner here. So it helps keep your watercolor from warping. And this is a good brand. Kenson's a really good brand and it um, has 20 sheets in it. It's 140 pounds. I haven't used this exact pad before, but it was only $15. And normally this kind of watercolor paper can run you even in the 30s. Look, there's my face. Hello, everyone. So I thought for that price, it would definitely at least be worth giving it a try. So I thought, oh yeah, okay. What's money, right? Spend it. And I'm not sure this is the last thing I got at Ruby Tuesday. Or Ruby Tuesday, that's a... I'm not sure if this is the last thing I got, I got at Tuesday mornings, but it's a whole pack of just scrap pieces of scrapbook paper. And it's not like textured or anything. It's just colored, like cardstock. All right, so I got these almost like business card size, which is really cute. So I got some just white cardstock, blue, blue, a little bit of yellow, and this kind of minty green. And then I got these squares. I love these ones. These ones can make some fun pictures. So I got the white, which is fun. Yellow, red, black will be fun to draw on. This toned brown will be really fun. Some more white and then some dark green. Ooh, then I got bookmark size. Oh, these are gonna be fun to make bookmarks. Look at those. And this one has, I don't know if you can see, has little flecks of different colors in it. That's very pretty. I like that bookmark size. And yes, you could go and buy cardstock and cut it into you know bits and pieces. But this was $2, the dollar ninety-nine. And it came in all these different colors, so I didn't have to go buy a whole bunch of different packs. So, and this one's really textured. So, and these are like the Four by six sizes so like a pink a purple a brown and that mint green again so i think that was fun for two dollars and especially if you're in car into card making which i have never gotten too much into card making before um i think this would be a good buy so we just had a new hobby lobby open up in springfield oregon so if you live around springfield go to the gateway mall and you can check out hobby lobby so i went and picked up a few things so the first thing i bought was this stationary paper set and it's actually in the calligraphy set and I don't know, I thought it would be really fun to practice this on. So it's just this awesome parchment paper. Just listen to it, it sounds so cool. And it's kind of got like the burnt edges and it's really has a really fun texture. And I don't know what I can do with it, but I'm gonna do something fun with it. I did end up playing with it. I used my Copics to see how the Copics would work. So I did like this picture of this koi fish on there and it kind of turned like metallic. I don't know if you can kind of see how shiny that is. It's really pretty. I think the more I play around with it, the better it will be. I want to test, actually, I think color pencils are what's going to work really well. Let's test it out. Let's put a little, yeah, I think it's going to be color pencils. It's going to play well with this. Oh, I bet you white would work really pretty on the koi because it's toned, and so white's going to be a new color that you can use. Look at that. I don't know. Can you see that? So this is just my little test paper I'm kind of practicing. I'll practice out a couple mediums on here. So I'm not doing anything with this as a finished piece. But so there was 20 sheets in this. It was $9. And I was going to use my uh, head half off coupon. But I actually bought something else that was more expensive. So I used it on that instead. But definitely be worth it if I could use my 50% off coupon on that and get it for $4.50. But I think even $9 isn't bad for all this paper. Um, I wouldn't just practice drawing on this. But yeah. So my expensive thing, I went and I, I'm running out of my Copic sketchbook paper. I've almost finished up my uh, Copic sketchbook. So I wanted to get some more Copic paper. So the only paper they had that was specific for Copics at Hobby Lobby was this Copic um, paper pad. And it's bleed proof and all that. And so I went ahead and got it. I'm not sure that I like it. So it's really thin paper. And you, I mean, the, the cool thing is, is it says it's bleed proof. And I mean, I soaked this paper down with ink and it obviously did not bleed through. So that's really nice. But you almost want your Copic paper to bleed because that's really how you, that's a technique that you use to mix and lighten your colors. Like I put a whole bunch of colorless blender on this and you really can't tell. I mean, maybe just the slightest hint of being paler, but if this was normal paper that I use with my Copics, that would have totally lightened up almost where you couldn't see it. 
um, and like blending, it doesn't blend. So I, so I'm glad I got the paper to try it. I'll use it, but it definitely is for a totally different technique than what I'm used to using my Copics with. And so I don't think I'll ever buy it again. So uh, I'm going to be doing a video where I talk all about my Copics and show you the supplies and things that I've gotten and my thoughts and opinions on them. And so I'll tell you the Copic paper that I recommend um, in that video. Sorry about that. So, you know, it was $14.99 for this pad or something like that. It was, yeah, I'm not super excited about it, but oh well live and learn that's what artists do you try stuff out and if it works it works and if it doesn't it doesn't but i am super excited about this so in the calligraphy aisle i also found this um ink brush and i thought maybe at first it was just like a brush but it's actually an ink pen and it's made in japan so it's all japanese writing on the back so i can't read what it says but it looks just like they're kind of wooden little brushes that they have um, but it works just like, like a Pentel brush pen. So that's the, it's got a really nice long tip to it. And I actually did the inking for this fish using this. And so it, it works very similar to the Pentel brush pen, but I don't know, it just looks cool. It's not heavy though. It, so this is definitely plastic. It kind of is meant to look like the wood handle and it even has a little hook so you can hang it. Um, but I like it. It was fun. I don't know that I'd buy it again. Um, I'm going to play around with it a little bit more and see how much more I like it, but, you know, it's fun to try. Um, yeah, they come in actually several different types. They have a brush pen, they have, like, actual nibs, um, so I got the brush one, so, yeah, I'll show you. So, you know, it, it works just like that. It's got a nice, nice soft tip to it. It's actually much softer of a brush nib, I mean, like, the brush itself is softer than the Pentel, so it works very much like a paintbrush. It doesn't have a really strong flow of ink, so you can't do like a really fast strike. Otherwise you're gonna get that kind of disjointed look, but it's okay. I also went back, I need to start buying these online because I can get them probably much cheaper, but I got a little, those little bags I used to put my artwork in when people buy my original artwork off my Etsy shop. And so I needed ones that would fit my half size papers. So I got these and you know it was $4.49 for this. I'm pretty sure if I do some searching that I probably can get this much much more cost efficient um, in a bulk. Um, but yeah I bought it because I needed it. Then I also picked up some new gummy erasers. So this is the general brand. I like this brand. I'm not super like brand specific on my gummy erasers but I do have used gum, um, but I have used the general brand before and enjoy it. I think this was like two dollars. I just ripped the tag off, so I can't. yeah. So now my gummy eraser can go in the new home. I got the small one. I probably should have gotten the big one. I don't know why I got the small one. I use it enough. But there we go. Actually, I'll probably take it out with a little baggie. So cute! Brand new gummy eraser is always so fun. go it's all clean and pretty yeah so yeah ha 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 your new home yay so for christmas a friend of mine gave me some gift cards to barnes and noble so i bought a couple of different art books and i'm not going to do a big review on these because i just got them um later on i will do a video where i kind of focus on a couple of different art books because i have a ton and everyone asks me about different art books that i use um so i will start kind of doing a themes of different art books and show them but this one's called Ma manga matrix to create unique characters using the japanese matrix system so i'm super excited so it has just tons of great illustrations and um, kind of talks about mixing your own creatures and the method that they use and I kind of looked a little bit in the front and it just looks really fascinating how they take and make up these different kind of characteristics and, and helps you come up with new ideas for creatures so if you're kind of in a creature designing um, low point and you can't figure out what you want to design um, this book might help you out so the second one I bought is this Comicer Write Amazing Manga Stories. Um, so it's Comicer Arts. 
and it's volume three. So they actually have two other volumes. I don't have those yet. Um, the first one, let's see. I don't know if it tells you the different books they have. So the first, so here's the two books that they do, other uh, two books. So number one is Tools and Techniques for Drawing Amazing Manga. And then the second one, which I think I want to get to as well, is Creating Amazing Manga Characters. So it helps you design your characters. Um, I was going to get that one, and then I found this one, and I thought it sounded a little bit more interesting, so I wanted to get that one first. But this one helps you in creating your story. So for those of you guys who are interested in writing your own stories or maybe making comics, um, I would think, and again, I haven't read this yet, I would think this would be a good book to start off with. So it talks not just from one person, it actually has in several different manga artists and creators uh, putting in their advice and things in there. So again, I don't know what it's about. I haven't read it yet, but I thought it would be fun to read. And I love just, I love concept sketch art. It just sounds it's so fun. It's so pretty. So again, I will give you a little bit more in depth after I check these out a little bit in fuller detail. So this one isn't an art, like how to book, but it is amazing. So for all the geeks and nerds out there, I am a huge Zelda fan. I love Zelda. Zelda was the first game that I played that got me into gaming. Um, well, no, actually, sorry. Mario was the first one. But this one, oh, Zelda was amazing. Zelda was the first ones that I would pull total all-nighters to play. Like, mm, so good. So this book here goes through um, just all the different games and lore and characters and designs and it is so fun. I am looking so forward to actually sitting down and reading through this and looking at the pictures. So pretty! And just the, the different kinds of characters I think would be inspiring. So a lot of you guys ask me what do I do to get inspiration when you're just like in an artist rut? Things like this are some of the things I'll go to to help get inspiration. Oh, I love things like this. So fun and beautiful. And in the very back, they have a really fun manga. Um, they have kind of that manga that kind of gives the backstory of the Skyward Sword. So I, re I already read it. It's, it's, I won't say anything about it because I don't want to ruin it. But yeah. Anyway. Well, there you go. Huge art haul for a while. I'm not going to buy any new art. Oh, wait, wait. No, I did get something else. I actually bought this a long time ago, but they are slowly sending them to me. I went online to Dick Blick and bought some Copic markers, and almost all of them are back ordered. And so I'm slowly waiting for my big order to come in, but they every once in a while will send me a couple. So I just got these two in. So I got an N5, which is a neutral gray, and this R81, which is a rose pink. And then they just told me today that they're sending me my colorless blender in the sketch. So I have it in the classic style, but you know, the big square ones. I have the color splendor in that, but I don't have it in sketch and I really want it in sketch. So it should be here next week. I'm so excited. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and checking out the fun things that I got at the store. Let me know in the comment section, what thing looks most interesting to you uh, to buy. And when you go out to buy art supplies, is it paper? Is it pens? Is it erasers? Is it storage things, books, you know, paints? What is it that you enjoy purchasing the most when you go out on a shopping spree for art things? Um, yeah, let me know. Well, again, thank you guys for hanging out with me. And until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.